Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Fearless. This movie tells the story of a wushu master who has to go through various tragedies in his life. His arrogance and loss made him become the best wushu master in mainland China. How's the story? Let's find out in Fearless. Fearless begins by showing a flashback of when Hu Yu and Jia was a child. He secretly watched his father Hu Andy teach martial arts wushu. Young Yu and Jia wanted to participate in wushu but was forbidden by his father because he worried about the boy's asthma. Hu Andy then asked his son to learn to write beautiful calligraphy. Finally, Yu and Jia practiced wushu in secret, while his calligraphy assignment was completed by his best friend, Jin Sun. One day, Yu and Jia and Jin Sun witnessed Yu and Jia's father fighting Zhao Zhiking in a martial arts battle. When he was about to deal a fatal blow to his opponent, Hu Andy saw his son watching the fierce battle and then restrained himself. This opportunity was not wasted by Zhao who immediately hit Hu Andy so that he was thrown out of the arena and declared defeated. Yu and Jia, who was crying over his father's defeat, was visited by Zhao Jian, the son of Zhao Zhikang. Zhao Jian then mocked him and the Hu family for being weak, which infuriated Yu and Jia and challenged Zhao Jian to fight him. Since Yu and Jia had no fighting abilities, even the boy could easily be defeated by Zhao Jian. After losing to Zhao Jian, Yu and Jia vowed to regain the honor and pride of the Hu family. He stole his father's book of moves and asked Jin Sen to copy all the techniques and moves for him to learn. The boy then practiced Wushu more seriously. On the other hand, Hu Andi, who knew Yu and Jia's fight with Zhao Jian, then punished his son so that he wouldn't repeat his actions. However, this did not stop Yu and Jia from actively practicing Wushu until he became as great as his father. Long story short, Yu and Jia has become a reliable fighter whose prowess exceeds his father's. He told his mother that his asthma was slowly getting better after he practiced intensive Wushu. While visiting his father's grave, he said that he had become a skilled fighter in Tianjin and was sure that his father would be proud of him if he were still alive today. One day, Yu and Jia was challenged by her childhood rival, Zhao Jian, to fight on top of a bamboo tower. Because both of them were very great warriors, the battle was fierce, until finally Yu and Jia managed to knock Zhao Jian out of the arena and won the match. In the evening, Yu and Jia celebrated his victory by throwing a party at the restaurant owned by his childhood friend, Jin Sun, and treating all his students to the restaurant. Because of his reputation as a martial arts master, Yu and Jia was getting new students every day, making him abandon his family, placing more importance on his career in martial arts. As a good friend, Jin Sun then advises Yu and Jia not to be too obsessed with fighting because life is not always about winning and losing. But it seemed that he didn't really care about his friend's words. He continued to fight until not a single swordsman in Tianjin could defeat his prowess in martial arts combat. Yu and Jia even arrogantly asked all the swordsmen there to attack him simultaneously and he was still able to defeat them all even though he was fighting alone. However, when Yu and Jia had already achieved success as the greatest martial arts master in Tianjin City, he became even more arrogant and cruel towards his opponents, unlike his late father who advised to always be humble and show mercy to opponents. His skyrocketing reputation as a martial arts master caused him to find many students who wanted to learn from him. But on the other hand, it actually makes him more reckless and underestimates everything, including spending his money on drinking and partying even going into debt with Jin Sun. One night, Yu and Jia was visited by some of his disciples who told him that one of the great martial arts masters, Kin Lei, had beaten one of his disciples. Feeling humiliated and angry, he went to Master Kin at the Jin Sun restaurant, where Master Kin celebrated his birthday with his family. Seeing Yu and Jia's arrival, Jin Sun tried to prevent his friend from fighting with Master Kin. However, Yu and Jia paid no heed to Jin Sun's words and insisted on challenging Master Kin to a fight because he had injured his disciple. Jin Sun, fed up with Yu and Jia's arrogant and cruel behavior, then angrily and decisively ended his friendship with him. Master Kin finally accepted Yu and Jia's challenge to fight. The two martial masters fought fiercely. However, as Yu and Jia overcame mounting anger, he defeated Master Kin with a fatal blow that instantly killed Master Kin. Master Kin's death then made his family and all his disciples feel very sad. After his father's death, Master Kin's godson then took revenge and killed Yu and Jia's mother and daughter. Overcome by deep sorrow and mounting anger, Yu and Jia went to Master Kin's house, where his godson confessed that he had killed his mother and daughter. After that, he committed suicide. Yu and Jia kept Master Kin's wife and daughter alive. Yu and Jia became even more depressed when he learned that his disciple had insulted Master Kin's wife while drunk, causing Master Kin to beat him. Racked with guilt for everything he had done, he fled Tianjin and wandered aimlessly for months. He nearly drowned in the river, but Granny's son and her blind granddaughter Moon saved him. 
After that, they took him to their village. During his stay with Granny Sun and Moon, who always taught him kindness and compassion, Yu and Jia became humble and compassionate over time. He also always worked hard to help Granny Sun and Moon by farming in the rice fields. One day, one of the boys in Moon's village was arrested by a neighboring village for stealing. The boy was beaten badly. Yu and Jia, hearing this, rushed to the neighboring village and asked for forgiveness for the boy. The village head promised to release the child, as long as Yu and Jia fought him. Yu and Jia accepted the challenge and was able to easily defeat the village chief. The next day, Moon told Yu and Jia that she would go on a pilgrimage to her parents' graves, which reminded him of his family's grave in Tianjin and instantly missed his family who had passed away. Yu and Jia then expressed his desire to return to Tianjin and make a pilgrimage to his family's grave. Hearing his wish, Moon looked sad because Yu and Jia was going to leave her. But before leaving, Yu and Jia promised that he would definitely come back to this village and meet Moon. Finally, in the year 1907, Yu and Jia returned to the city of Tianjin. Arriving there, he saw many changes that occurred in his hometown, where now the city of Tianjin has been crowded with many foreign nationals, along with the occupation of the invaders who are trying to control mainland China. Upon returning to his long abandoned home, he was greeted by his loyal servant. He then burned all the victories he had earned from the fight and visited his family's grave, where he apologized to his family for letting them down. After that, he went to Master Kin's house, apologized to his family, and asked for permission to pay respects to Master Kin's grave. Master Kin's wife accepted Yu and Jia's apology, and allowed him to make a pilgrimage to her husband's grave. One day, Yu and Jia read a newspaper that reported about a wrestler from America named Hercules O'Brien who had defeated many fighters from China. Arrogantly, Hercules expressed his desire to challenge the Chinese warriors and slaughter all the Chinese. Seeing this, Yuan Jia was furious because Hercules had offended the dignity of the Chinese. He then went to Jinsen's house and apologized to his best friend for letting him down. Yuan Jia then expressed his desire to fight with Hercules and borrowed money from Jinsen for the cost of traveling to Shanghai. Jinsen accepted Yuan Jia's apology, but he didn't allow him to fight anymore because he didn't want his best friend to get into trouble again. Even though Yuan Jia tried to convince Jinsen that he had changed, Jinsen still opposed his wish. Because he didn't get a loan, Yu and Jia left the Jinsun residence. But before that, he put down the newspaper about Hercules as well as his controversial statement. After Jinsun read the newspaper, he changed his mind and sent money to Yu and Jia through his men to Yu and Jia's house. Long story short, Yu and Jia arrived in Shanghai and was about to start a fight with Hercules. Before the match, he requested that he and Hercules fight with honor and courtesy. Yu and Jia showed Hercules about the pride of China's wushu martial arts during their match. He could easily overturn Hercules' attacks with the wushu moves he had learned over the years. When Hercules was knocked down and nearly pierced by some nails in the arena, Yu and Jia saved the wrestler and won his gratitude. The match ended with Hercules happily calling Yu and Jia the true winner. News of Yu and Jia's victory spread quickly and in 1909, with financial support from Jinsun, Yu and Jia founded the Qin Wu Athletic Association in Shanghai, where he gathered warriors from all branches of Chinese martial arts to unite and promise not to fight with fellow warriors from China. On the other hand, the Foreign Chamber of Commerce members are afraid that Yu and Jia's victory will trigger anti-foreign sentiment among the Chinese people and raise the nationalism of the Chinese population, which can be a loss for them. They then proposed a match between Yu and Jia and four foreign champions. Yu and Jia accepted the challenge, even though he had to fight four times in a row. Before the match, he met the champion from Japan named Tanaka for tea together. The two men quickly became familiar with each other and developed friendships because Tanaka had learned many valuable lessons from Yu and Jia who had more fighting experience than him. The day of the fight arrived. Yu and Jia can easily beat a boxer from England, a lancer from Belgium and a fencer from Spain in just one round. On September 14, 1910, he finally faced Tanaka after defeating European challengers. In the first round, they fought with their weapon of choice. Yu and Jia uses a Sanja gun, while Tanaka uses a katana. In the heat of the fight, the two accidentally exchange weapons. Yu and Jia can handle the katana proficiently, while Tanaka can defend himself but struggles when attacking with the Sanja gun. Yu and Jia offers to exchange weapons with Tanaka, and the first round ends in a draw. Before the next round began, Yu and Jia unknowingly drank the tea poisoned by a member of the Foreign Chamber of Commerce. In the second round involving unarmed combat, Yu and Jia had difficulty breathing and began to lose his strength. He started coughing up blood from arsenic poisoning. Tanaka and Yu and Jia's supporters demand that the match be stopped and postponed, as well as Jinsun who wants to take his friend to the hospital. 
However, Yuan Jia still wants to continue because he will die anyway. Tanaka asks Yuan Jia to stop the fight, but he refuses saying that the fight is not about him, but about the honor and dignity of the Chinese nation. Near his death, Yuan Jia who was overwhelmed by Tanaka's attack, was still able to deliver the final blow to Tanaka's chest using the same technique he used when killing Master Kin. However, Yuan Jia deliberately restrained him, and smiled at Tanaka before he collapsed unconscious. On the other hand, Tanaka who realized that he could die if Yuan Jia used more strength, declared Hu Yuan Jia the victor just as the man breathed his last. The film ends by showing the epilogue where Hu Yuan Jia's spirit practices wushu in the field, while Moon is observing him. Yuan Jia turned to the girl and smiled at her, showing that he had fulfilled his promise to return to Moon.